So here's what it looks like intraorally. Okay, so the CDC, okay, I'm not sure how accurate they are, but uh, estimates that one in three people get shingles at least once in their lifetime. And of those one in three, around 6% will get it on a recurrent basis. Okay, so that that's that's high enough of a recurrence rate to take note of this disorder. Okay. Uh, and another reason I put this here is that shingles seems to be on the rise. Okay. So there's no definitive reason why yet. It could be that there's more stress related phenomenon or because of children getting vaccinated against chicken pox, never having the disease in the first place, or more people are just stressed in general since the pandemic started. Uh, who knows? Okay. But uh, who doesn't have stress? <clears throat> but what we do see is it's definitely on the rise. So to help serve these patients better, make sure they have a cyclovir or Valtrex or something on hand and to start taking it the day of their dental procedure, okay, to minimize the likelihood of this outbreaking. Because I can see on that picture on the right there on the palate, uh, it could be so debilitating that they lose up to 10 pounds because they just can't eat because anything that touches it is just excruciatingly painful. Okay. <clears throat> so here are two sample scripts. Okay. Most common is the one on the left, a cyclovir. Okay. 200 milligram caplets dispense 25, take one caplet Q4H. I have them usually load up a loading dose uh, the day before and then continue it maybe for a day or two, just so they don't get any kind of an outbreak. <clears throat> so to recap, extremely painful, limits the ability to eat, very debilitating. Okay, ask the patients, do you ever break out in cold sores after dental treatment? You'd be surprised how many will say yes, they do. Okay, and uh, you can look like a hero to them. <clears throat> Stress is a trigger as well. And for many dental visits, is a stressful experience, okay? That can compound the likelihood of this uh, expressing itself in their tissues. So minimize stress. Uh, and most common prescription is acyclovir, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> in the mouth, is it generally seen unilaterally? Good question. Yes, it is because it follows the path of the nerve. It's so funny. On the palate, you'll see it exactly come up to the halfway point and not cross the other side because it's a completely different nerve branch. Good question. All right, osteoporosis, okay? Uh, AKA bone weakening, uh, systemic skeletal disorder with compromised bone density, leading to increased risk of bone fractures, okay? In, in fact, more than 2 million fractures occur each year. Okay. And 70% of them, actually over 70%, occur in postmenopausal women. So, this is a serious public health problem. Okay. So, who's at risk for osteoporosis? Number one is postmenopausal women. Okay. Because of the hormonal changes in the body. Number two is depression, which we're going to cover next. Okay. Depression produces an increase in cortisol production, and we know that cortisol steroids interfere with bone formation, okay? Osteoporosis are the cells that produce more bone, okay? And they are affected by cortisol, okay? Making weaker bones, okay? Number three, patients that take long-term steroids at, are at greater risk. And number four, SSRIs, which we will cover in the depression section, okay? So the argument is for osteoporosis imperio that skeletal changes systemically would inevitably impact the jaw bones and that resorption of the alveolar bone may influence clinical periodontal parameters, okay, such as probing depths, uh, tooth loss, clinical attachment loss, et cetera. So typically women are affected more than men, okay? And the World Health Organization 
defines it as a bone mineral density score of two and a half times or standard deviations uh, below the average peak in young adults. <clears throat> okay. I uh, circled receding gums there. So this is medical journals state these five symptoms of osteoporosis, fracture of bones, height loss, curved shape of the spine, lower back pain, and receding gums. Okay, receding gums among that, why? Okay, so this has been noted as a sign of osteoporosis, and it could be due to the tissue fragility, okay, the fragile tissue that occurs as a result of this resorptive process or processes going on in the bone. Okay, keep in mind that when you do scaling root planing in patients with osteoporosis, due to these resorptive processes, you might actually experience more recession in these individuals because of this. There's no hard data for this, but my experience has been that when it comes to perio. Okay, now when it comes to implants, I beg to differ. Let me explain. I had a patient that I treated a number of years ago that was diagnosed formally with osteoporosis, not osteopenia, osteoporosis. She was missing a number 19. She wanted an implant badly. I warned her of the risks with decreased bone mineralization, the hardness of the bone. I just don't know if the implant will work. Well, I went in, I did the surgery. She consented to everything. Did my crestal incision, flapped it, prepared the bone, you know, drilled my first two, three sequences. And as soon as I passed the cortical layer, that outside layer of the bone with the drill, just, just dropped right in. There was nothing in there, the marrow. Okay, absolutely nothing. Widened it for, for the implant placement. I placed the implant in, and the only thing holding the implant was that one to two millimeters of cortical bone. Okay, that's it at the collar. The implant was not moving in any way except that it was spinning, okay, when I placed it in. So it wasn't that solid, okay, at all. Well, three months later, she comes back. I test it, rock solid, no mobility whatsoever, okay? So does it affect implants? Some literature says yes, some says no. I've placed many in osteoporosis and I have not seen myself the problems with implants with osteoporosis. So that's just been my experience. And I've done almost, I'm, I'm close to doing 10,000 probably implants in my career. So I've, I've learned a thing or two about them and I just, I haven't seen that association with osteoporosis. 